Yeah, might as well. Here's Nick. Do we technically need to have a quorum tonight? Um, even we have the the applicant in front of us, but since we are an advisory council, do we still have to have the full quorum to review this, or can we just give, you know, have them do their thing and then we just give them a letter after? Well, fortunately, you have a quorum now. So, do we? You do. Mm -hmm. I'm bringing Frank over. Oh, wonderful! And I see Kellard Sessions is here. Um, so, folks, please just bear with us. We're we're getting the infrastructure of the meeting set up here. So just another moment, if you will. Okie doke. Hi, Jan. Hi, how are you? I'm good. I'm Maddie. I don't think we've ever met. Nice to meet you. I'm Kate. Uh, nice to meet you. Yeah. Okay, um, Chair Schlott. You can uh, you can get going whenever you're ready. All right, so we're gonna bring this meeting of the advisor, Environmental Advisory Council to order. Um, Kate Schlott is present. Uh, we'll just do a quick go around for the council to um, say who is here. So um, Kate Schlott, chairperson present and uh, next. Nick Tadro, present. Today to Guru, present. And Frank, hi. Uh, I I think you might be on mute. I can't hear you, uh, but we see that you're here. It looks like he's working on it. So we'll yeah. <laughs> give okay. him just, just a moment. Um, I'm uh, Assistant Village Manager Maddie Zahach. Um, we're also joined this evening by Jan uh, Johansson uh, from Kellard Sessions. Um, and I know we have one application in front of the board this evening. So uh, Chair, if you're ready to go, I can bring those folks into the meeting. Uh, I am ready. I'm assuming everyone else is ready. Yes, wonderful. Um, yes, let's uh, let's begin. Okay. Okay, I have Dustin and I have Ed. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, Mr. Wheeler, is there anyone else on your team? I see a couple other attendees in the gallery, but I'm not sure if they're specific Steve to your Oth. Pardon? Steve Auth, if he's in there. Uh, Steve, I see a Steve, yes. Okay. Here, Steve. So Ed, Ed is the project engineer, and Steve is the uh, contractor in charge of the, the project itself. Okay. You're not waiting on a Paul, are you? Uh, Paul would be the wetlands uh, uh, survey person. Okay. So, I'm yes. bringing Paul in too. So now we got a, a full uh, full crowd here. Okay, Chair, I will turn it over to you. I'm going to share the screen to bring up the application. Okay, so we're reviewing nine Brook Place, and you're here for a um, wetlands permit. Um, so um, we, I know we had briefly looked at, um, we had met two months ago, I think at this point now, almost a month and a half ago. That sounds about right. Yeah, just okay. just early June. Okay, and I believe at that point we were waiting on um, the wetland survey, and I believe a couple of other, um, I guess, soil samples and um, the the requisite uh, paperwork. Um, so I guess, um, do you need? Are they doing a presentation for this tonight? Um, I'm going to turn it over to Ed Vergano, and he's he's kind of got everything together. Hopefully. Okay. And I think you're still on mute. Hello. Hello. Hi. You have my picture up? Am I up? 
who who's um oh is steve speaking yes uh, yeah okay hi um no i actually don't see your your picture but i do hear you oh okay I, i'll sign so it i had on mute i didn't realize it can you hear me now yes i hear you ed the um uh, the project involves stabilizing a, a uh, failing slope uh, that's directly uh, sort of the plan directly looking directly behind the uh, septic residence. The um, proposal is to uh, install two um, essentially um, parallel uh, segmented block retaining walls and um, change the steep slope into a uh, more stable, relatively flat area. With uh, again separated by by uh, by, uh, by a tier by a tiered system. Um, can you see my cursor? Hello. Um, I can see. I got yeah. it. Yeah. So I'm I'm in control of the screen. I'm happy to to give the annotation to somebody else. I just need to know who I'm giving it to. Uh, Steve, why don't you explain the uh, sequence of disruption? There you go. Let, let me let me continue there. Uh, Steve, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Right, I, I was just starting to explain the um, project that there's two essentially uh, parallel walls that are place uh, creating two level areas, placing the steep slope, which is a failure. Yes. Yeah. The, uh, the other the other thing is the uh, way to control the drainage uh, by um, installing two uh, inlets. Uh, the corner of the uh, garage is shown um, on, the, on the site plan. And uh, that would take the uh, water from the um, leader, leader drains, roof drains, and direct it directly into a seepage pit, which would um, show, show on page of P2. Right there, see if you could just a little bit. I'm yep. sorry, Mr. Vergano, I'm having a lot of difficulty hearing you. So I'm if, if you're sending me somewhere specific, I'm I'm having trouble hearing you. I, I, I try to speak loud. The um drains would be directed around the uh the uh, the retaining wall then to a um, seepage pit, which would uh, fill up and bleed out the water in a very controlled manner, eliminating any erosion potential in that area. And uh, there's another drainage inlet at the second level of the drainage um, basin. The catch basin, which will um, drink water, the riprap area in front of the in front of the bottom wall, and that of course will uh, will dissipate the, uh, the flow and and stabilize the slope, the remaining slope much better. Now the sequence of construction is very sensitive, and that's something that Steve should explain. Yes, as far as the construction goes, in order to start the job, I need to gain access to the steep slope. So if you look at the top of the plan, I would start excavating there and bench a machine down the side of the bank. Um, once I'm down to the plateau, which would be approximately the base of the lower wall, um, my intention is then to bring in some temporary blocks to retain 
uh, that slope while I'm working on that retaining wall. Um, then I intend to have some uh, 80, 80 tons of gravel conveyed into the property. There's no way to get the material back there. So we use a truck conveyor to convey the, the gravel to the backside of the property. And then I will set a, additional stones, blocks, I mean stone walls, to retain the bank while we construct the lower wall. My intention is to start the lower wall, install the inlet um, and uh, stormwater detention basin as shown on the map at the bottom of the lower wall. Once that is completed, I will bring that wall all the way up to its full elevation, and then we will work towards the house to do the second wall. But the first order of the day will be to connect the two, all the roof drains, the two catch basins, and put that detention pit in, because I do not want to deal with the roof water during the construction of the wall system. Any questions? When you said that the uh, um, the seepage detention system that Steve uh, referred to is uh, actually a seepage pit, it's shown on the, right there, and uh, that, that that would need to be done first to control any runoff right. from the house. This is a substantial amount. I think there's six downspouts on that house, given the footprint. So there's a substantial amount of water comes off that roof in a rain. And that's a, that, 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 that's a permanent improvement. That won't be just during construction. That's it's going to remain after construction. I'm having trouble hearing yet. I'm sorry. That's a, that's a permanent improvement. It's not going to be just during the construction. That's going to be um, left uh, uh, to, to, to service the, uh, the runoff from the uh, from the roof. Yes, yeah, we need to remove that water. What it's going to require is I'm going to have to go in there and I'm going to have to put some kind of a temporary support to hold the deck because the deck is seriously failing. So my intention is to resupport the deck and then perform the installation of the two catch basins, tie all the roof drains and then install the, that pipe from the roof, from the yard drains over to the, the, the uh, detention pit or the uh, dissipator, if you will. How long does a job like this typically take? Well, once the base of the walls, the base of the walls of the entire project, once the walls, the walls are set, the base is set, um, it's just like a big set of Lego blocks. They just snap together, you know? So um, I would say you're probably looking at two weeks just to establish the first and second course. After that, if I could get the block fast enough, it would be done in a week. Um, and then, it's, then, you know, then we need to move to the second phase, which would be the upper wall and the same thing. Establish the base course. Once the base course is established and stabilized, we'll install our drainage and fabric behind the wall, supply the gravel, and construct the second wall. Probably looking at anywhere from four to six weeks from start to complete. Let me add, in addition to the uh, silt fence that would be um, erected around the uh, limited disturbance, the um, site will be covered with a tarp during yes. predicted uh, down, heavy downfalls. Yes, I have a 60 by 80 tarp that is on a, a roll. And what we'll do in the event of a rain uh, forecast, we will tarp the entire project from the house down to the brook. So it would be just sheet flow off of the tarp, which would be clean water. Is there any vegetation where you're going to build the retaining wall? Uh, the answer, to, uh, Paul Janig here. I don't. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, the answer to that is, yeah. Almost the that that basically that entire slope is unvegetated. It's all but scarified. Um, nothing's higher than an inch or so. Uh, it's it's yeah. There, there's a good photo right there. Yeah, it's pretty much unvegetated, and it and like Ed said, it's unstable. So you've got areas that are just uh, uh, micro areas that are there's soil uh, slump going on. So 
Mm-hmm. Um, there, there's nothing that's going to have to be removed, in my opinion. If, if there is anything, it, there's a couple of little. There's, um, in fact, it shows on one of the photos here. You see, uh, I don't know if you see on the cursor. I think it's photo. Uh, there's three, three photographs yeah. with a little three in the middle. Yeah. yeah. Ed, Ed could probably speak more to it, but that that that's probably going to go just just because I see the uh, the retain the old retaining that, wall to the right. That, that tree is actually gone. If you're referring yeah, to that photo, that that tree so, was removed earlier gone. this year for a solar panel project. Anyway. Okay, but when I was out to do the uh, wetlands delineation, the it was pretty wide open, uh, and uh, it's a fill slope and it's uh, un unvegetated. Yeah, the only thing that's on the ground there is mostly uh, weedy stuff like mugwort that's been uh, kept pretty low. So, uh, are, you, are you done planning to plant some vegetation when the new retaining wall is in place to help stabilize the land? Well, the state, the the, the, the uh, land between the, the lower wall and the and the brook will be stabilized with with, with probably with grass. Um, I've got a spec on that, on the erosion control plan, but um, I don't think there's any intention, unless uh, Dustin, you want to speak to that, putting any uh, high growing vegetation. Um, I don't have any real plans as far as, as planting that area at the moment. Um, Honestly, the reason I bought this property is because I love the fact that there was no backyard and it was relatively low maintenance and I even after having this wall would like to keep that back area low maintenance and so for the most part i'm just going to let what grows grow and uh, the the things below the bottom part of the wall will essentially just stay wild you know what whatever's growing there already the only thing that i would suggest with that is that we do want to be careful of invasive plants coming in so that you're about to engage in a project that's going to disturb a lot of the area and that creates a prime situation for invasives to move in so um and i think that's part of why frank is also asking is if, if there's a way that you know letting it grow but if there's a way that we can control some of those invasives yeah. so that they aren't taking over especially things like japanese knotweed which is notorious along our, our river fronts and in a lot of shaded moist areas so um even if there's something you just put in as a sprinkling to help compete against I am, that I, yeah, I am the, happy to do that and and if you have some suggestions or resources that i can look into i'd I, I'd love to do that. I'd, I'd like okay. to promote, you know, a healthy, relatively native ecosystem there. What we'll do is when, when we write the letter for the planning board as well, we'll put in some recommendations <laughs> and point you to directions that could absolutely help with that. Um, the EAC does have a list of native plants that you can use as recommendations. Um, so we'll put stuff in there to help you, um, to help direct you in that direction. So. Right. Sounds perfect. <laughs> As as the excuse me, but as the contract, I would like to do that sooner than later. As soon as the first or second course of the lower wall has been installed, I would like to immediately address that and have the because we're in the perfect time to grow stuff right now. So okay. that's my intention. All right. Sounds great. All right. Uh, hi, it's uh, Jan Johannesson from Colored Sessions. Um, one, you know, on carrying up on the on the 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 plantings. The, the code does require a wetland mitigation plan, which we haven't received yet. Um, so the, the the plantings on the, the bottom course between the bottom course of the wall and the stream, you know, you're going to have to develop a plan, uh, in my opinion, because it's, it's a requirement of the code. Um, if this was strictly a replacement in kind, perhaps not, but, um, you know, the, there's quite a bit of change happening to the slope. We're going from, you know, basically a small retaining wall to two nine foot retaining walls and um, the slopes characteristics are, are changing. Not saying that's a bad thing, um, but I think it would be, you know, appropriate um, to to provide a planting plan as the code requires for, um, you know, the the corridor, you know, the, the brook corridor there. So we'll be looking for that. Yeah, I don't think uh, they have any objection to it. In fact, what we could do is, uh... Dustin and Ed and I can uh, talk about and put together a mitigation plan and then submit it to you to review if that works. 
Yeah. And I think I would, you know, from my perspective anyway, we, we were out to the site yesterday and there, there is about a bunch of uh, roof drainage going onto the slope and it's, it's on, it's on um, managed right now. So um, I would, from my perspective anyway, I would count um, the dry well as part of your mitigation because all the roof drainage is going to be directed to that and it's going to, you know, basically filter out the water and um, before it hits the brook. That will eventually overflow in a heavy storm and flow into the brook. But right now it's completely unmanaged. Mm. It's going directly into the brook after going through a pretty unvegetated slope. So there's no doubt about it in my mind that, you know, this will be a, a benefit to the stream. Um, but I think it's still appropriate to to provide a planting plan. Uh, sure. yep. I, think, I think between the planting plan and and the uh, the dry well, you'll be in good shape. Hey, Ed. Are, are you able to call up my uh, wetlands? Uh, actually, I think I could do that. Share screen. I'm sorry, which document do you need shared? Uh, just the wetlands uh, map. Oh, here sure. it is. Yep, give me one moment. You're, you're going to do that. Okay, great. Yep. We just want to make sure that. Uh, okay, yeah, this is yeah. this is good. The The reason why I call this up is, is see what I've got here uh, uh, on the pointer. You see that area shade? That's the woodland edge. Are you able to follow my cursor? We we yeah. can't see your cursor. They can only see mine. So let me oh, I, okay. I give so you remote I, control though. Oh, I'll tell you what. Well, I don't even if you look on if you look on this map, are you giving me the cursor? Yep. It says waiting for Paul to control your screen. I I feel the power here. Okay? All right. I feel Use it, it wisely, my friend. So, exactly. You give a little and it will take it all. So I just quickly on this map, I've got blue, that's the water course. And then there's a little corridor along the edge or green, but this area that I have shaded in kind of look, it looks gray on this, but that's the woods. And there's the edge of the woods. And if you follow the cursor right here, you see right there, that big gap right there, that's not any, you know, it's basically open land between the, so we would definitely want to put something right there for that little, there, there's a, a little re, old boulder retaining wall right on the meander. So Sorry, this Paul, is we, we can't see your cursor. So this is still, oh, okay. so tell, okay. tell me where I'm going. All right, so well, here's what I'll do. If you look at the map and you see where it says uh, SS4, these little red dots that have SS next to them. Mm -hmm. And it's, five, kind of, it's, two, it's near the south, it's near the southwest ah, property line. SS4, right. yes. So so just below that, you see those little things that look, look like six eggs in a in a row. Yes. So that's a that's an old uh, field stone retaining wall. So so it's basically a drop down to the brook from there. But that if you look at the where the woodland edge that I have that's shaded in grayish, there it's it's op wide open there. So that's definitely a place we'd want to put a buffer uh, to uh, between the, uh, the the water course and the uh, the base of the slope. <laughs> So really where that woodland edge is that you see, wherever the woodland edge, there's a gap between that and where the final wall ends up, that's where we'll, we'll, we'll do our mitigation. But most particularly down on where that SS4 is, where it's, it's pretty much wide open. What planting are you proposing? Well, we wouldn't bring any trees down there. We, it'd be uh, ground cover and maybe some shrubs. So it'd be the type of thing that you could you could bring down yourself, along with a, a seed, some seed mix. The idea is that when it's all done, it's a place that uh, he doesn't have to maintain, and in, in any fashion, other than to take care of any uh, uh, invasives. And then any seed mix we put down there would have things, something. I'd probably any of the scarified areas at the base install some oats seeds in with the uh, because you want something that gets in there grows quickly so that the invasives don't uh, take over and then the other stuff can follow but i'm just generalizing we don't have a mitigation plan but that's that that would be our intent to do something like that mm -hmm. And then we'd include any notes as to how we'd maintain it and what we would, wouldn't do down there and what we would do down there, but um, and how we'd install everything. And I, I guess from what the contractor says, that would be something you'd want to do as really the first thing. 
So that's what we would do then. Paul, what's the plan for, um, you know, I think there's 10 or 12 feet uh, flat area between the two tiered retaining walls. What's the plan for that area? Uh, I could, we hadn't planned on anything, but uh, you know, uh, I think that the, uh, the owner is perfectly amenable to, to putting something there other than uh, uh, grass. I, I think Ed, right now it's just, we, they want to vegetate. Is that right, Ed? Yeah. The terraces? The terrace between the retaining wall? Yeah. yeah. There's two retaining walls and there's a terrace between them. That that you want vegetated, Ed, right? Yeah. Just, was that the plan? On your plan. Uh, my plan to show is the, to stabilize the grass. So you want grass. So uh, if there's if there's uh, uh, something else you would want, we, we certainly can do that. It's just what's the owner's intent for the area if he's going to mow it and wants it as like a yeah, yeah. area, that's one thing. But if he doesn't want to, then you could, you know, you might be able to do something nice in there with wildflowers or something. Yeah, my that's... my intention was either either you know grass, clover, something like that, or a wildflower mix. Um, yeah. I hadn't hadn't made much of a choice. I'm sure my wife has some preference, but I don't. Well, after uh, you talk, after you talk to the boss, Dustin, uh, yeah. and you can <laughs> um, you know the wildflowers actually is a good idea because you know it'll enhance your property and it'll yeah. be a lot less maintenance. So, it, um, and. In terms of permitting, does it make a difference between one of those choices? Well, I think that if you know you did a wildflower mix or pollinators or something that we could count that towards uh, mitigation. If it's going to be maintaining turf, then no, that doesn't count. Okay. So, yeah. So the answer is yes. Great. <laughs> Good to know. And I'll I'll discuss that with her, and we'll we'll put the final answer in the forms. But I will push her toward wildflower mix or you know native native grassy types we're, no fine, grass, right? we're finalizing a uh, just so the the board's aware finalizing a technical memo uh for the planning board uh submission and we'll we'll copy you on that um in general i think the plan is you know is, is a good one we have some some engineering details that have to get worked out, um, but you know, from a wetlands perspective and an environmental perspective, you know, having been to the site, you know, this is something that needs to happen, and um, it sounds like they're they're taking the right approaches. I think at the end of the day, it'll be a you know a benefit. Yeah, I was I was actually thinking about this property during the last couple of weeks of intense rainstorms that we've had, uh, so definitely been on my mind of like how this could proceed um the the plan does look good in my opinion at this point um so all, when do you need the letter by for the planning board when do you plan on going before them again to move forward with this is that going to be the next meeting we'd like to be on this month's meeting especially since they're not meeting in august yeah i think that the intention is to have it on as continuing business uh next i think it's next monday yeah so the 20, I want to say, what 24th. is Monday's? the 24th? Okay. Or is it a Tuesday? Yeah. I think it's Tuesday the 25th. I'm sorry. Yeah. Confusing my days here. Okay. I don't have any questions, any follow-up questions at this point um, for you. Does anyone on the EAC have any other questions um, for the applicant? Oh, no, I pretty much discussed what I was wondering. Yeah, I do not. As well. um, so what I'll do is I'm going to start writing up the letter tonight and circulate it to the rest of the council. So if there's any additional feedback um, that we might want to give uh, the applicant um, for the next uh, planning board meeting, we can do that. Um, and everything that we discussed as far as the wetlands mitigation plan, the vegetation, point, you know, websites um, to help uh, figure out what kind of plantings that will all be included in the letter as well. Okay. Um, Maddie, is there anything else that we would need to include on this for the planning board to look over that you I, are aware of? I 
do not believe so. Um, but chair, I will check in first thing tomorrow morning um, and make sure that that is in fact the case so that if there's any additional note you need to make in your memo, we can be sure to have it addressed for next Tuesday. Okay. Um, well, I I don't have any other follow-up uh, questions. So if um, we are good on our end on the EAC and we'll get that letter to you um, by the end of the weekend. So you'll have some time to look it over um, and have it ready for the Tuesday meeting. Right. Is that an effective approving resolution with, with conditions? I'm sorry, say that again? Is that, uh, do you um, produce resolutions or is it just your advisory committee? We're advisory. I see. You know, you know, you know, I have a I have a question uh, for anybody who can answer. Would you uh, or would the planning board be wanting to see a mitigation plan for this coming Tuesday meeting? And if they did, would that facilitate things? Uh, my my gut instinct is yes. I don't know if Jan if if you feel differently, um, but I think the the hope um, is that this project's going to appear on Tuesday and then be yeah. approved. Um, so this is probably the the last. The last meeting <laughs> and and they did ask about a mitigation plan at the last meeting oh okay so so if we if we if we were to get that in uh say uh from monday would that probably be sufficient for some kind of review by the professionals um, i'm not sure that happens paul you know I, I think i i think we're on the same page here um and i'm sure that um, if you get me something on Monday, I can review it before. Okay, great. Yeah, because we're gonna have our, I, <clears throat> the engineering memo is going to go out tomorrow. Um, it's going to say you need a wetland mitigation plan, but um, you uh, can certainly pass something by me on Monday, and I can take a look at it. All right, very good. All right. Um, believe that would be it for um, this application. Um, do you have any follow-up questions for us before uh, you you go tonight? Nope. I don't have anything. All right. Great. All right. Um, so we'll make sure to get that letter to you and have this all done so that we can get you ready for the Tuesday meeting um, right. and get you moving forward. All right. Excellent. Thank you very right. much. Great. Yeah. Thanks Thank a lot. Thank you very much. Very, have a very helpful. Night. Good night. Chair, is there any uh, new or continuing business of the EAC? Um, just continuing business. I just wanted to follow up with everyone about uh, natural resource inventory um, that we're going to try to actually see and finish um, in the next year. Um, so back in 2019, for those of you who weren't on the board in 2019, or this is new information for you, um, the EAC had set out to uh, do an open space and natural resource inventory for the village. Um, things got held up, um, and then COVID happened, and everything just kind of got hit on um, pause. Um, so right now, um, DEC is actually um, hosting a series of training webinars on how to do a natural resource inventory for municipalities, um, and they're holding this um, once a month. The next meeting is on Tuesday. Um, if you are interested in attending, I will forward over the information, um, but it's a, a monthly webinar slash workshop uh, to kind of help um, get us the resources that we actually need to see this through. Um, I've spoken with um, Mitzi Elks, who is the chairperson for the Environmental Advisory Committee um, on the town, um, and they're on board with being a partner municipality. Um, so one of the um, natural resource inventory grants that the DEC has is to help municipalities that are partnering with neighboring municipalities um, that have tributaries that feed into the Hudson to do a, a type of, of inventory. So um, they have agreed. Um, I also know that Croton on Hudson is currently also attending the meetings as well. So I know this is something that they're interested in, in doing. Um, so if so that moving forward, um, we're going to try to get that off the ground. I believe that these webinars go through November. 
Um, and then they will probably most likely end with a grant application to help us cover um, the cost uh, that we would need to actually get you know, the resources to do the mapping, create the report, uh, and give us whatever kind of training that we might need to actually see this through. Um, so between now and the end of the year, um, if people have a particular area of expertise, um, something that within the NRI that would spark their interest and they would want to focus their attention on, please let me know. Um, I will forward over all of the information that I have so far. Um, they have supplied um, some other natural resource inventory examples that have been some really good ones. So things that we can kind of model what we do after um, what other municipalities have done. Um, so that is uh, where we are with that at the moment. So we're not actually doing the inventory just yet, but we're getting all of our ducks in a row and getting ready to actually kick it off. Um, and if the grant application that I believe that they were discussing opening up again does happen, the inventory would take place during next year in 2024. Um, so typically the, the way that it had worked was that they would, um, you would get the grant approval, it would start in January, and you would have the calendar year to actually conduct the inventory and produce the report. Um, I think that was it in a nutshell. Uh, any, are there questions that anybody might have about that or any like, ideas or recommendations um, that I can bring to them if you can't um, attend the meeting? Well, I would like to attend the meeting next Tuesday. Okay. Um, at least then I can familiarize myself with the whole setup. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah, it's um, I'm Ingrid. Oh, I forget her last name off the top of my head. Um, is the one that is conducting those. So I'll forward over the um, the link. Um, and I believe the meeting is at three o'clock on Tuesday. Okay. also be interested in attending on three at that time so to also to familiarize myself beyond the conceptual here and this is this has been a project that has been like we started and then stopped and then started and then stopped and then once we were finally getting like things moving everything shut down um so then within the process of all of that you know we're, we're trying to get all of those projects that kind of got paused uh, in 2020 and 2021, actually start moving them, moving them forward. So that's, that's, uh, that was my continuing business for the council. I don't have anything, anything else on the agenda. Okay, well, then I think we can call this meeting to a close. Thanks, everybody. All right. So um, so I guess this is, um, I guess I'm making a motion to end tonight's meeting. Second. Yes. Thank you. All right. <laughs> uh, so I'll send out the email tonight to everyone and uh, hopefully I'll be able to see you on Tuesday. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Kate. Good night, night all. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Have a good night. See you.